In this presentation we're going to look at joint probability distributions. So what we have here is the joint distribution of two random variables x and y. So what we have here is a table. They're both discrete random variables x and y. What we're asked to do is find the probability or find out the value of c because this is related to the, oh, uh, the probabilities. Uh, just to sort of remark, what are we looking at? The probability of x equal to 1 when y is equal to 1 also oops, is 6c. I'm just reading this from this particular cell here. Okay. Um, so uh, the probability of x equals 1, we can find that. It's the marginal total. The probability of x equal to 2 is the marginal total there. And the probability of x equal to 3 is the marginal total there. What I mean by the marginal total is the row totals for each of these rows. Okay. So there's the first one there. The probability of x equal to 1 is 2c plus 3c plus uh, sorry, 6c plus 3c plus 2c plus 4c. That is equal to, that's the first row there, that would be equal to 15c. So that would be sort of our marginal total there. Uh, likewise, the next one would be 10c and then 5c. Okay. So essentially the overall probability has to be equal to 1. That's an exhaustive table. So 30c, which is the sum of these three, has to be equal to 1. So C is essentially 1 over 30. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do now is calculate the marginal distributions of X and Y. So we'll just sort of follow on from that. What I'm going to do is set this up in a new table uh, on the next page here. I'm just going to pause this a second to draw it. So there we go. Um, what I'm going to do here is we have this like 6c, that is 6 over 30. Okay, I'll just leave everything over 30. 3 over 30, 2 over 30, and 4 over 30. Uh, 4 over 30, 2 over 30, 4 over 30, and that's 0. Likewise, 0 down here. 2 over 30. Uh, 1 over 30 and 2 over 30. And in the last case, what we had here is just remember I added them up there just to help me find it. It was 15c, which is 15 over 30. This was 10 over 30. And this was 5 over 30. So that's the marginal distribution of x here. So I'll just go the marginal distribution of x is this here. Okay. Now what we do is add up the other way for the marginal distribution of y. We just add up the column totals. This is 12 over 30. Okay. 6 plus 4 plus 2. This is 6 over 30. Um, this is 6 over 30. And likewise 6 over 30. Okay. So what does that mean? Essentially the probability of y equal to 1 is 12 over 30, or in other words, 0.4. Uh, probability of x equal to 3 is equal to 5 over 30, or in other words, 16, 0.166. That's how you might sort of read that. So those are the marginal totals, for, marginal distributions for x and y, okay? So they're just uh, treating each variable on its own rather than the joint distribution. Uh, the joint distribution, just to clarify what that means, for example, the probability of y equal to 1 and x equal to 3, actually that just should be, that should be in capitals really, is equal to 2 over 30, okay? Now, uh, that's the joint distribution, okay? So, that's grand. Now, what we're asked to do in the next question is calculate the expected value of x and the variance of y. The, uh, the variance of x and the variance, expected value of x and the uh, variance of x. So the expected value of x is the sum of from 1 to 3. That's because there's three possible outcomes of x. Okay. x equals 1, x equals 2, x is 3. xi times pi. Okay, that's to sort of say uh, the probability of it being one. This is a possible outcome times the probability of that. Actually, I'll just sort of make it a little bit clearer to read. Okay, so so the probability of x i. Okay, now the notation is there. Essentially, what we have to do here is 
calculate the probability so that is equal to the probability of x equal to one or one times the probability of x equal to one plus two times the probability of x equal to two plus three times the probability of x equal to three and my pen is jammed so essentially there we go that's a occupational hazard of working with like loads of different software at the same time so uh, so essentially what we're going to do is just I'm going to pause this for a second and try and fix that Okay, and that is 1 times uh, 15 over 30 plus 2 times 10 over 30 plus 3 times 5 over 30. Uh, working that out, it's a, a straightforward enough calculation and you'll find that the answer is, let's just check it myself, the answer is 5 over 3. Okay. Are we actually, let's do that at 15 plus 20 plus 15 all over 30 yeah 5 over 3 it's 50 over 30 which is 5 over 3 uh, next what we could do is variance of y or variance of x and how do we calculate that that's the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared okay that's a very important identity okay that's one you should know off by heart and I, I sort of say this in other videos but I'll say it again these are two different things here okay so the expected value of x squared is essentially the sum of x squared times the probability of x okay so in this case what we're going to looking for is 1 squared times 15 over 30 plus 2 squared times 10 over 30 plus 3 squared over 5 over 30 that's what we're essentially calculating here that is 1 squared is essentially 15 over 30 uh, plus four, 2 squared is 4 times 10 is 40 over 30 and 3 squared is 9 9 times 5 is 45 over 30 uh, working that out, essentially what we get is a variance of, sorry, this this part here, the expected value of x equals, x. E, the expected value of x squared equals, um, let's calculate it, that, that's 100 over 30, or 10 over 3, okay. Now, the variance of x is again the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared that is 10 over 3 minus uh, 5 over 3 squared let's uh, work that out as 30 over 9 minus 25 over 9 and that is 5 over 9 so the expected value of or the variance of x is 5 over 9 okay so that's the answer to that one now um, we could I'll, I'll quickly just sort of state what the expected value of variance of y or sorry uh, the expected value of y is uh, just looking back at our answers what we found is that it was uh, 12 over 30, 6 over 30, 6 over 30, 6 over 30. And the the possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's just quickly do that. It's just repeating the same thing. So that's 1 times 12 over 30 is not 0.4. Okay. Plus 2 times not 0.2. Plus 3 times not 0.2. Plus 4 times not 0.2. Okay, uh, and this that uh, will work out to be eleven over five. Okay, or in other words, 
2.2 okay so that's the expected value of y the variance of y I'm going to leave but essentially it's just sort of uh, I need the expected value of y but the variance of y I don't really need it you could do it the same way you've done it for the calculate the variance of x I'll just sort of state it here variance of y equals the expected value of y squared minus the expected value of y to be squared okay and so on you can just minus 2.2 .2 squared essentially you just work like that you just have to calculate that I'm gonna sort of move on from that because I want to go move on to the next question uh, the next question is let's go back here to the start uh, so we've found that and we found the variance of x and we also know the variance of y so what I want to do here now is show that the covariance of x uh, times y equals 0 okay now this is going to take up a good bit of work so how do we do this so first off I need this the expected value of y okay essentially what we have to do here is the covariance of x and y is calculated as the expected value of x times y uh, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y okay so this we know this we also know but this is going to take up a good bit of work to calculate it's simple straightforward work but essentially what we have to do is calculate all the possible values of x times y and the, the resultant probabilities so what I'm going to do is have to go back to my table and it's actually a simple enough process but just setting it up is take a bit time consuming so what I'm going to do is go back to my table and I'm just going to pause it and redraw my table so here I have my table out again with the result with the corresponding probabilities now what we're interested in here is the product of x and y okay so in this first case, I'm going to draw this in black pen, uh, x equals 1, y equals 1, x times y is 1, okay, x equals 1, y is equal to 2, so, uh, well, 1 times 2 is 2, likewise 3 and 4, okay. Now, the next uh, sort of set of values here, 2 times 1 is 2, uh, 4, 6 and 8, okay. Just as a sort of quick remark, you might notice that 8 is uh, an impossible value. We're not going to get 8 anywhere else. Actually, I'll just finish this off. 3, uh, 6, 9, and 12. Okay. Now, uh, according to our table, the possible outcomes are as follows. We can, uh, for example, we can get the probability of uh, e, uh, the probability of x times y is equal to 2 here it is 3 over 30 plus 4 over 30 if, so let's just think about that for a second I'm just going to write that down here the probability of x times y equal to 2 is 7 over 30 okay let's just let you sync that in, it's the sum of those two let's do another one here, the probability of x equal to 6 is 4 over 30 plus 1 over 30 okay and that is 5 over 30 so probably of x y probably of x times y equals 6 equals 5 over 30 the probability of x times y equal to 8 is equal to the probability of x times y equal to 9 and that is 0 so we're going to disregard that outcome there so the possible outcomes are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 okay so what we have to do just like we've done it up here is we have to go through each possible outcome probably of x equal to 1 probably of x equal to 2 probably of x equal to 3 4 6 and 12 and calculate each of these here and then draw a little table like this okay so I have it done out there so the pr x times y one those are the possible outcomes there 1 2 3 4 5 uh, 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 and those are the corresponding probabilities just the way I've calculated them there uh, and the last I just add up all the, the various sums now what we have to do is calculate the expected value of x times y 
and that is 1 times 6 over 30 oops 1 times 6 over 30 plus 2 times 7 over 30 plus 3 times 4 over 30 let's go out, keep going at that plus 4 times 6 over 30 plus 6 times 5 over 30 let's just sort of go back up there that, that's where I am now these two columns here and then finally 12 plus 12 times 2 over 30 okay Uh, working that out, this is just a, a, a straightforward bit of calculator work, but that actually will work out to be 110 over 30 or 11 over 3. Okay, so the expected value of the product of x and y is 11 over 3. Okay, now what? Why did we do that again? Because what we are do, trying to find out is the covariance of x and y and that is the expected value of x times y, the product of x and y, minus, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. That's another very important formula, just in case I didn't state that earlier. That's another very important formula, particularly with these joint tables. Okay. So just rounding up, or sort of collecting up all the values we got, we just got 11 over 3 there. Earlier on in the question, we got 5 over 3 for e to the x, or so e of x, the expected value of x, and the expected value of y we found to be uh, 11 over 5. Okay. So let's just sort of point it out. That's there, that is that one, and that is that one. Uh, we're going to multiply these two. Okay and so what we get is 11 over 3 uh, you can probably see that the uh, fives cancel out okay so what we are left with is 11 over 3 and that's just equal to 0 okay so what does that mean let's just actually go back to the question we were asked at the start show that the covariance of x and y is equal to 0 so we've done that we've calculated all of these terms here I'm just going through there. That's how, how we found the expected value of y. And that's how we uh, show uh, showed that that was zero. Okay. So uh, that's the first part of this uh, presentation done. It takes a good while to get through it. And I'll move on to the next question. And that ne in the next question, I'll just go scroll back up here. State with a reason whether or not x and y are independent. Well, if the uh, They're not independent, but well, let's ex explain that in the next presentation.